Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman. Our next guest is Hannah Burns. Hannah with Ripple Wellness Consulting. Welcome, Hannah. Thank you for having me. A pleasure to have you on. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about uh, Ripple Wellness Consulting and what you guys do? All right, great. Well, Ripple is a wellness consulting service provider. Basically, what we do is we connect wellness experts to clients, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and create comprehensive wellness programs for these businesses. So we're very nimble, very hands-on, uh, very customizable. Um, and we work with our clients to really understand their employee population and their wellness needs, um, both how, where, when their employees work, and then provide the experts and support and programming needed to address those needs. So tell us a little bit about the range of services. I would imagine what one might think of as traditional, some non-traditional. Uh, tell us about the, the gamut of, uh, of services that you're connecting your clients with. Great question. So when people think of wellness, I think they first gravitate towards fitness um, movement. Um, and so in my own personal wellness journey, I started there. I think we all think, okay, let's go for a run. Let's get healthy. Right. But we know now it's much more involved than that and it's evolved. And so types of programming that we can bring to clients include nutrition, um, we can move into the realm of mental health, which is very top of mind lately. And in there, it's time management, self-care. There's a lot of support, too, in the wellness pillars on executive coaching um, as well. And then the last and final piece that has been very popular and in high demand lately has to do with uh, parenting support. So working parent support as well. Hmm. I, I was going to ask in the age of the pandemic, I'm sure you've seen a little bit of a shift in terms of where the demand is and what the needs are. And um, are you seeing, uh, what has what, what the uh, last year uh, been like? Why don't, you, why don't you give us a sense of, you know, not only from a, a demand perspective, but this, the mix of services that people are looking for, how those services are being delivered. Uh, obviously, you've had to pivot to everything remote. Um, has that been a significant uh, change for you? Well, I, I launched my business in the middle of the pandemic. So uh, my, my barometer or my baseline is the pandemic. What I, I originally had been doing commercial finance for 15 years prior to this. And so when I did set out to launch Ripple, yes, the wellness pillars that I originally had, just, you know, thinking about launching nutrition, fitness, you know, some self-care, but a lot of executive coaching and upskilling has transitioned more heavily into the working parent support and the mental health support um, as far as self-care. So um, from a shift in business, you know, we, I kind of launched and have always been in those pillars. Um, how we deliver the services is obviously remote. Um, a lot of the experts and service providers have put together virtual on-demand programming, which, you know, I, I think we're realizing that when you're a working parent or when you're strapped for time to have these videos and these resources available to you when you are available, whether it's 8 a.m. in the morning, 8 p.m. at night, midnight, you know, that's helpful. So I would say the delivery of content has shifted from where I originally thought it would be predominantly in person. Hmm. It's, uh, and do you uh, envision that change coming about where it'll be more, more in person uh, or is the on-demand world here to stay as, uh, as those of us who have been glued to Netflix, uh, you know, and, and all those odd hours of the day and night uh, for, for a year plus have been? The on-demand is here to stay. I think the demand that we're seeing now is, okay, the pandemic hit, everything went online, everything went Zoom, everything went virtual. And now we're craving that connection. And so how that relates to the wellness service providers is yes, we have an on-demand program, but then we have a 24 seven ask a nurse feature. Um, if you need to talk to a registered nurse in the working parent support um, for nutrition, there's you know weekly workshops where people are brought together and are focused on building a community and a support system as well. Um, so I think the combination of both in-person um, and on-demand virtual programming is here to stay. And how do um, 
people typically engage with you? Is it is it uh, typically through a corporate HR function, or is it individuals that come to you? Where where do they? How do people come to you? It comes from all over. So. Typically, um, what I'm doing, you know, if I proactively reach out to someone in a company, it's someone in the HR department. Um, then we also have people reaching out to me saying, hey, my employees need um, some support from a nutritional standpoint. Uh, for instance, if they're a uh, manufacturing firm and it's hard to get, you know, healthy food on site um, all the time, how do we address that? So, um, it's a little of both right now. And then also there are, you know, my experts also work with individual clients. And sometimes these clients who work at businesses are thinking to themselves, hey, how can I get um, these benefits incorporated into the business that I work with with my colleagues? This is so helpful. So um, we're seeing it from a few different angles. We, we like we like all angles. We'll go in and anyway, uh, you know, referral or direct, uh, but typically through the HR department is how I is how I connect with people. And is there a required scale for a company to work with you or if they have one one individual that has need? Uh, is, is there any any sort of target size that you're looking for? Great question. So. You know, we've worked with clients that have less than 10 employees and also clients with over a thousand employees. So again, we are nimble. Um, the services we have are scalable. I'm supportive and all for tech um, as far as apps and on-demand virtual programming. But I think what our value add is that we're sitting down with HR. We're really getting to know these employees and their needs. Um, and then building the program around them and then assessing how the program is working. So we have KPIs and metrics that we're looking for that would be unique to each business um, to see that these programs are actually creating a well person. Um, and so, you know, I think that depending on your need, if you want to address, you know, one person in the, uh, in the business or you know, a leadership team or um, a managing team, um, we can address, uh, we can flex uh, to, an, so, so you know, really a lot fascinating. of fascinating, Right. You, yeah. you, 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 can, you can essentially bring to the table whatever the needs are of the company and the individuals are, and you're really doing that to, to create that customized sort of uh, wellness program, as you said. Um, right. And, we and, also, and, and just to, you know, for the listeners out there too, we can start really slow. I think the name Ripple kind of alludes to that, right? We, we don't think we need to come in and overhaul wellness programs, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, we can come in and do a three-week workshop. Like, let's let's just talk about it. Let's start somewhere. Um, let's pick one pillar. Um, so we don't have to be as invasive and scary as uh, as we may sound. I would imagine, you know, given the pandemic, there's a lot of companies that are looking to engage their uh, employees. And uh, one one low hanging piece of low hanging fruit, if you will, is wellness, right? Everybody's concerned about, you know, how their employees are doing in the midst of uh, of the pandemic and the change. And um, so, programs that you can bring to the table, I'm sure, address some of those things and and create positive company cultures. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we're looking forward to you know addressing the whole employee, and then you know building back or supporting that community uh, internally, however best we can. Now, are most of the programs that you're doing, um, take for example, if you're in a company of 50 people, uh, are they all voluntary as far as the employees are concerned? Or, or sometimes are you in a situation where, you know, you must take part in this? Um, how does that push and pull uh, happen? They're, they're typically vo vo voluntary, excuse me, but um, we make it voluntary with incentives as well. So, so that, uh, that helps push the needle. And again, we're not just throwing in programming here that's um, not relevant to most of the employees. I think we do a good job and set out to address needs and making our program accessible um, and uh, thoughtful at the same time. Good stuff. It sounds uh, really exciting. Wish you continued success as we hopefully emerge from the pandemic and uh, and yeah, hopefully your uh, business continues to, to move in the right direction and grow and, and prosper. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Me too. Hannah, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Great. So I'm on LinkedIn, Hannah Burns. 
Again, the company name is Ripple Wellness Consulting. My website is www.ripplecorporate.com. Would love to hear from you. Any questions, uh, you know, what you're doing to help your employees from a wellness perspective. I'm here to learn and, uh, you know, just to see what everyone else is doing out in the market. So thank you very much for your time. Great stuff. Thank you for being a guest on Radio Entrepreneurs. And we'll be right back with another segment on Radio Entrepreneurs.